This week on Mill Street, we're inspired by a trip to Crete with Mariana Leva Tataki, who taught us how to make a dead simple version of souvlaki at home. Plus, we make two more Mariana favorites, a yogurt olive oil flatbread, and then an amazing dessert, broken phyllo cake with orange and bay. So please stay tuned as we explore a taste of Crete. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures. We are in the village of Dracona in the mountains of Crete. I'm really excited to be back here. I'm a chef in, in another country, um, having had traveled a lot. But what I like to think or believe is that my building blocks, um, what I'm made for as a chef, you know, are these blocks that were created here on this island through experience um, I've had with food and people. What we're going to do today is we're going to make quite a popular Greek street food dish, which is a souvlaki. And I think everyone in this country consumes a large amount of souvlaki. So it's shredded pork yep. in a pita, here in Hanya, it's with yogurt and tomato and onion and chips, mm -hmm. closed up. Street food, delicious, amazing. You are very particular about your souvlaki, and I'm confident from what you've told me that I could go to any number of souvlaki shops in Crete and not get what you make. <laughs> So like it's a street food, it's something that should happen quickly, you know, right. not that should take an hour to be eaten. Right. When I was really young, my mum would go shopping for the restaurant in town. And when we finished our shopping, went to the markets, got everything we needed, car was full, she's like, shall we go and have a souvlaki? And in her head, it was that, we'll have a souvlaki, you take half an hour, we go home, you know, and continue <laughs> what we need to do. Well. I was very particular then, and where I used to ask for a plate, you don't usually get a plate. This is so. something you carry, like a sandwich? Yes, okay. exactly. So I would open my pizza flat on the plate, and then I would have all the meat and onion and tomato yep. and chips separate. For your recipe for souvlaki, you kind of just jumped to the finish line. So we've got lovely pork, and you know, here you will use shoulders and slow cook it, you know, on a spit, and this will take hours and hours. This is a version that uses a leaner cut, it uses a, a tenderloin. And then inspired by my travels and my cooking experience, so it's really marinated in spices that are warm, like paprika and chili and fenugreek, which I absolutely adore. And just give it this slight twist that make it unique, different, but still delicious. Every cuisine in the world has, it seems, a flatbread. What's the role of flatbread in Cretan cuisine? Flatbreads are used for souvlaki. I decided to add some semolina okay. for texture. And I've decided to add some yogurt because mm. we make so much yogurt here. And because, in my opinion, it just creates a softer texture bread. Right. Tzatziki. It's a very typical Greek dip. It's made with um, Greek style yogurt and cucumber and garlic and lots of olive oil and some vinegar. And it's really easy. You can have it with meat, you can have it with fish, you can make a big batch and put it in your fridge. So I just grill the tenderloin and then slice it. We have all the components ready. We have really nice hot yogurt flatbreads. We have our pork fillet. We have our tomato salad. And we have our tzatziki. 
with the wild cucumber today. And last touch is a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over the pork. This is my version of a Greek souvlaki. It's, it's uh, spicy, it's smoky, it's punchy, it's fresh, it's got nice salad, it's really healthy. It's got lovely homemade yogurt flatbreads. I can't wait to eat it, so kaliorexi. <laughs> So it turns out uh, you can do souvlaki at home. We're starting with two pound and a quarter pork tenderloins. So let's talk a little bit about how we're going to season this. Now some of these seasonings are indigenous to Crete and some are inspired by other places like Turkey. So we have oregano and thyme, salt and pepper of course, uh, smoked paprika which adds a little bit of grilled flavor to it. You can use Aleppo pepper or you can use cayenne pepper. But the key ingredient here is fenugreek, which is used in Indian cooking, also Turkish cooking. It has two very distinctive flavors. One is sweet. Some people say it's like maple syrup. I think it smells like butterscotch pudding. Uh, and it also has a sort of resinous bitterness to it, more like cumin. So it's got both of those things going on. It's very distinctive. So put those uh, together, stir them up. Okay, so we have our spice herb mix. Now we have the two pork tenderloins. We've cut each of them in half crosswise. So we'll just cut one side, then the other. So now we're gonna let uh, the pork sit for about 15 minutes. So while the pork uh, rests for about 15 minutes, we'll start with the cucumbers for the tzatziki uh, salad and then also onions for the tomato salad. We like using box graters. So we have um, obviously a strainer in here. Uh, in a bowl, because we're going to salt the cucumbers and let them sit and get some of the excess water out. Okay, so uh, half a teaspoon of salt. These are English cucumbers, which are not as bitter as American cucumbers. They also have a thinner skin. Let them sit, and some of that water is going to come out. So when you mix it with the yogurt, obviously you don't want to dilute the yogurt. Meanwhile, we'll start on the onions. This is half an onion, which has been sliced. And we'll add a quarter teaspoon of pepper and a quarter teaspoon of salt to this and two tablespoons of lemon juice. This is just a simple thing you can always do at home. Uh, and it's going to take the edge off the onions so they're not harsh. Uh, they still have a lot of flavor. And you don't have to let this sit very long, maybe 15 minutes. So the onions are going to sit, the cucumbers are going to sit and now we'll get on and start cooking the tenderloin. So we're going to use a couple tablespoons of oil, loosely measured, and we're going to get that up to a sort of a medium-high level uh, to saute the pork. Now, we're not going to fully cook the pork in the skillet on the stovetop. We're going to do sort of a light browning, three or four minutes, and then shove it in a pretty hot oven, 450 oven, to finish cooking. What you don't want to do is burn uh, the spices and the herbs on the outside. And that's why we're not going to take this to a really deep sear. It's been just a minute and a half, two minutes. Um, that's a nice sear, uh, but it's not overly uh, seared. So it's been just about four minutes total. Looks good. So now this is going to go in a 450 oven. So we're not going to burn the outside, but we get the inside up to temperature. You only need pork cooked to about 140. You don't want to go to 150 or 60. And then we're going to let it rest uh, before we slice into it. So these obviously came out of the oven about 10 minutes in a 450 oven. Uh, one personal note, uh, when you take a skillet out of an oven, you want to leave it on the counter or on a stovetop with a kitchen towel or oven mitt on it just so somebody else comes by and doesn't grab it. So we'll take these out and let them sit. You want to let them sit at least 10 minutes or so. If you cut right into it now, uh, a lot of the juices will just come flowing out onto the board. So we'll let that sit, uh, and now we'll finish up the two salads. So we had the cucumber grated. Uh, I'm just going to now squeeze out that water, of which there is a lot. So now all of that cucumber is getting <laughs> reduced to a small ball. So there we are. Put that aside. Uh, now we have three other ingredients we're going to add. Olive oil, of course, grated garlic cloves, a little red wine vinegar, and we'll mix this up. So the tzatziki is done. We'll just set that aside, and now we're going to deal with the uh, tomato onion salad. 
again, the onions have been sitting uh, in a little bit of lemon juice, which means that harsh bite's gone. Uh, we have olive oil, of course, some oregano, and I'm gonna, just going to mix that up. And then the tomatoes, which were cored and sliced. I'm just going to use my hand, actually. There we go. So the two salads are done, and we'll just let the pork rest another few minutes until the juices really come back into the protein. So when we slice it, the juices stay in the meat. So the pork is rested, which means it's ready to be sliced. So we'll do about a quarter inch thick slices. So you can see, I'll just pick this up. So you can see the pork is still really juicy inside. That's because uh, we took it out when it was about 135. It'll go up to 140, 142 a little as it's resting. That way it's nice and juicy and it's also safe, of course. We have our, our yogurt olive oil flatbreads. Put a little bit of pork on that. We'll have the tomato onion salad. And the tzatziki, cucumber yogurt. And there we have souvlaki made at home without a spit. So thanks to Mariana Leva Tadaki, uh, we can now make souvlaki at home. It's absolutely delicious and it's absolutely simple. Today I'm going to be showing you yogurt and olive oil flatbreads. They're soft, they're plush, they're full of flavor and tang, and I couldn't be more excited. Let's get started. To begin this recipe, I'm going to combine Greek yogurt, olive oil, and some warm water. I'm going to whisk it till it's consistent. Okay, that's incorporated well enough, and I'm going to move to my dry ingredients now. I'm going to use regular flour as well as some semolina flour. That's going to give it some gentle bite and texture. I'm also using instant yeast. This is also known as rapid rise yeast. So make sure you get the right kind. And last, some salt. Whisk my dry ingredients together. So my dry ingredients are now incorporated and I'm going to make a well in the center to add the liquid. So I'm gonna pour all the wet ingredients straight into this well. And using a spatula, I'm going to mix this until it forms a shaggy dough. So now that this dough is to the right consistency, I'm going to knead it. I'm going to flour the surface lightly. And I'm going to knead this dough for about two minutes. I'm going to pull this into a nice smooth ball and I'm going to oil the bowl and put the dough in there. Cover it with a kitchen towel and let it rest for 30 to 60 minutes. So my dough is done rising. It's beautiful. So I'm gonna flour the counter and then turn the dough out and begin making balls to roll. So I'm just gonna form a log and I'm going to cut it into eight pieces using a bench scraper. We'll form them into smooth balls and let them rest aside, covered with a kitchen towel while we start rolling our flatbreads. So what I've also done is cut several squares of parchment paper and they're going to serve to keep these flatbreads apart once they're rolled. We're rolling into eight inch rounds. This reminds me of home. I grew up learning to roll flatbreads as a child in the kitchen. And to make sure your flatbreads cook well, you want to make sure they're very evenly rolled. And the thing to pay attention to is the edges. The edges need to be as even as the rest of the flatbread. So this is rolled into a pretty decent round. I'm going to flour my parchment here and gently transfer this onto the parchment and I'm gonna cover it with another piece of parchment. So this is how I'm gonna keep all of the flatbreads rolled and ready. So I've done my first flatbread, I have seven more to roll out and stack and then we'll be ready to cook them. So all my flatbreads have been rolled out and now I'm gonna start cooking them off. To do that, I like to use a cast iron skillet. If you have a non-stick skillet, you can use that as well. And while that's heating, I'm gonna prepare the spice mix. 
This is an incredibly flavorful and potent mix. It has za'atar, sumac, and dried oregano. And if you can't find these spices at your local spice store, you can also look online for them. A little salt, some oil. I'm just gonna whisk that together. So the spice oil is ready, and now it's time to make sure that my pan is hot enough, and I'm gonna use some water to test. Just a few drops should evaporate almost immediately. Now you will probably start to see in the first few seconds some bubbles starting to appear, and that is perfectly normal and an excellent sign. So we wanna give these about one to two minutes on each side. That looks great, you want a little bit of spotting. So it's been a couple of minutes on each side. The browning is looking perfect, so I'm gonna pull this out. And to finish, I'm gonna brush it with this delicious spice oil. There's the earthiness from the sesame and the tang of the sumac and the lovely herbal flavors of the oregano are gonna be so great. Okay, so I'm gonna cook the rest of them and then we'll be ready to eat. I don't know about you, but my heart is aglow right now with joy just looking at this plate of simple flatbreads. This is our yogurt and olive oil flatbread with za'atar oil, and I cannot wait to bite into this. We've driven up the mountain of Psiloritis in Crete to come to the shepherd's shelter, which is known as Tospiti Tuvosku. It's an incredible place in an amazing location, and it really celebrates gastronomy in Crete and reflects what really happens in the mountains in terms of what's eaten and how people live. So I feel extremely grateful for being here, and I'm actually allowed to use their wood-fired oven to make my favorite orange and broken phyllo cake. It's the easiest cake in the world, it's the tastiest cake in the world, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. So instead of flour, we use phyllo that's been dried up in the oven. And basically what you get is a very light product that you fold into your eggs and sugar and custard base. After your cake is baked, it comes out the oven and this amazing syrup that has been spiced with cardamom and cinnamon and orange peel is poured all over it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by making the syrup. So what we need is water and we are going to use some orange peel and orange juice. So we're going to take some peel off the orange. And, you know, if you like it really orangey, you can add more or less. And then we're going to cut these and in the very traditional way, not having a juicer in the mountains, I am going to extract the juice. Some bay leaf and some cardamom. And I just pop the whole cardamom pods in because you're creating a tea, an aromatic tea. So the cardamom will give its flavor and a cinnamon stick. We're just going to add the sugar and get it on the heat. Perfect. Now we're going to continue with the cake. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our sugar and place it in a bowl and then get our orange zest and mix the two together. Just so the two ingredients mingle. So this smells really, really lovely. Okay, so really nice zest, really aromatic. So I want to get that flavor everywhere. So we're gonna add the eggs now. So I always like to use really good quality eggs. It's nice when you have the ability to do that for cake. So, you know, just source the best you can. Great. So mix the eggs before I add anything else. Um, so we're following with the yogurt, really nice, thick yogurt. It's just a, a lovely addition to cakes. It creates a really nice texture. Um, we are going to follow with the oil and the baking powder. 
pinch of salt. Always good to add a pinch of salt. Great, so we'll give this a mix and try and get it nice and homogenous and smooth before we fold in the phyllo. So that's the last, last thing we're doing. I think our syrup is ready, so I'm just going to turn the heat off and uncover it and let it cool. So this looks lovely. The last thing we're going to do here is add our dry phyllo. So I just want to say a couple of things about the phyllo. Firstly, it's baklava phyllo. So you buy it in rolls and it is this extremely paper thin pastry that is just very hard to make really. We buy this and what I do, I just cut the roll into thin strips and then I separate it. So I'll just show you this amount. I separate this so I make sure nothing is stuck together. Just give some air to this. And I pop it on a baking tray and just dry it out without colour in a low oven. That's it. As soon as it's dry, it will look like this. I had to do mine earlier. So it's really light, it's really crispy, and it just adds the best texture to the cake. You have to do it in batches. So we're going to add half the phyllo initially, and then we'll fold in the other half. We want to get our wet ingredients mixed really, really well with the phyllo. So, great, everything looks well mixed. The cake is ready to go in the oven. I rolled my cake tin. As soon as we get it in, it needs about 45 minutes at 350 degrees, and then it's ready to come out, syrup to go on top, and we can eat it quite quickly. So let's do that. Our cake is ready. It's come out the wood oven and it's looking amazing. It's lovely and golden over the top. And I'm just going to give it a few pokes with my knife just to help the syrup go in and penetrate the sponge. The syrup will not enter the cake uh, immediately, so don't worry too much about it. You can do it in batches. And if you see flooding going on, don't worry about it at all. It takes a bit of time to absorb the liquid and the sweet syrup, so just wait um, until everything is taken in. So that's it. And we're just going to let it sit for a while and see what happens. I don't think it's going to take long and then we can enjoy peace. So the cake has had its resting time. It should be in perfect condition. So let's have a look and see what we've managed today. So there we go. Looking good. So let's cut this cake and see what it looks like. This is my broken phyllo cake recipe with Orange and Bay from the south of Crete. Um, I really hope you enjoy it as much as I do. So, Kalima Sorix. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with all clad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. All clad for all your kitchen adventures. Hey everybody, Christopher Kimball here at Milk Street and thanks for watching us on YouTube. By the way, please subscribe to our channel and also click the bell for updates uh, as we roll out new shows. By the way, all the recipes from our current TV season are available for free at our website, 
which is 177milkstreet.com. That's 177milkstreet.com. Thanks and enjoy our shows.